Hey. You hungry? You slept through breakfast, but I could always whip us up a late lunch. Oh, it's after two. Why didn't you wake me? I obviously needed the rest. Oh, no, no, I need to, I need to get home. The girls. The girls are with Winifred. It's all right. No, nothing is all right. I'm a married woman. Whose husband can't be bothered to pick up the phone. Tad has a lot on his mind. His son and his brother are missing. They need his full attention. And what about what you need, Crystal? Shouldn't somebody pay attention to that? This was a mistake. I never should have come here. Oh, Crystal. You were hurting, and you needed someone to lean on. Someone who understands your pain. You helped me through a very dark period after Babe died. If it weren't for you, I would have pulled that trigger and ended my life. You brought me back from the edge, Crystal. I owe you so much. Not only did you give me a, a beautiful daughter, but you gave me a reason to live. did the same for me. You know, I was praying that the pain and the grief would just swallow me whole. And then you came along. No pressure, no expectations. You just, you let me be me. And I, I, I needed that, that freedom, you know, I needed that that peaceful place where I could go and get away from everything else in my life. The house, the kids, Dad. I am here whenever you need to get away. Winifred wondering where I am. Hello? Crystal, it's Joe. We need to talk. What's wrong? It's not anything I want to get into over the telephone. Can you come down to the hospital? Well, yeah, I I'll be there later, Joe, for the, um, you know, for the, for the set ceremony. No, no, this can't wait, Crystal. Oh, okay, well... I have to make some arrangements with the kids first. Just ask a nurse to have me paged when you get here, okay? <sighs> what? That was Joe. He probably knows I spent the night here. <laughs> That's not possible. <sighs> You'd have to scale a tree two stories to peer in through the bedroom window. And Joe is a lot of things, but he's not a peeping Tom. <laughs> Hey, what's happened is just between us, all right? Nobody ever has to know. It's just as you suggested. Great. Why the rush? The wing's not even done. <sighs> well, the holidays were difficult to say the least. So I wanted something positive to focus my energies on so I wouldn't feel so lonely without babe. I'm sure you can relate. You can't be that lonely. Colby saw you at Tad's with Crystal and the kids celebrating Christmas. You know, you two have been spending a lot of time together. Hmm. I would have much preferred to spend the holidays with my grandson watching him open presents. But since you elected to whisk him away on an impromptu ski trip, that option wasn't available to me. Speaking of the trip, how was the time at the lodge? Hmm? Time well spent, I hope. Maybe one of those trips neither of you will ever forget. 
<laughs> okay, Crystal. Okay, just calm down and take some deep breaths. Yes, I yes, can't. you can. You yes. can. It'll pass. Okay. Just focus on your breathing. You can do this. No. Everything's no, gonna be fine. No, no, it is not. No, stop it. Get away from me. You heard her, Hayward. Get your hands off her. <sighs> coming here this afternoon now as you all know each and every resident of pine valley was affected by the tornadoes in one way or another homes were damaged lives were lost and families were changed forever including my own my beautiful daughter babe was trapped at the comeback when one of the first funnel clouds touched down she passed leaving behind a gorgeous little boy who will now have to grow up without his mother. So with that in mind, I've decided to rebuild this wing as a way of preserving Babe's memory for her son. So for all those whose lives she's touched and for those she will continue to touch through the services provided right here in this very hospital. Now, although Babe's death was devastating, her mother and I take great comfort in knowing that eventually some good will come from all this heartache. Excuse me. Sorry. No. Hold on. I'll go. So without further ado, I give you the Babe Chandler Cardiac Memorial Wing. <laughs> I invite you all to stay for a toast. Dr. Hayward has graciously provided champagne, so please grab a glass and, and let's all go to... Just, uh, sorry, uh, but before you do that, before you all go, you know, toast the great Dr. Hayward, there's something you should probably know about your new chief of staff. Uh, for example, how he blackmailed his predecessor, Joe Martin, uh, outstanding doctor here at the hospital for over 40 years, uh, into stepping down so that he could step up into you know, taking over that position. I'm sorry I interrupted you. You know, this might be a good time if you want to brag about whatever it is, whatever dirty little secret you have over my father. It'd be a good time. Boy, Jake, I don't know which is worse, your bad timing or your bad taste. Look, we can all agree that Joe Martin is an excellent, excellent physician. But it was his choice to step down as chief of staff so that he might focus on his family particularly on his youngest son, Jake, who, unlike his father, has left this hospital open to all sorts of lawsuits during his tenure here, from renegade surgeries to dumping his caseload on interns so that he can be free to romance patients in his care. Now, his father may have made allowances for his actions in the past, but as the new chief of staff, I can assure you that I won't be so lenient. As a matter of fact, as my first official order of business, I am removing Jake Martin from this hospital staff, effective immediately. All right? What kind of question is that? My life is a wreck, and it's all your fault. Ever since you turned up back in Pine Valley, I've been, I've been trashing my life and my marriage, and... Well, if it helps to put the blame on me, go right ahead. Mm. But it's not gonna bring Babe back. Nothing will. That's what has you so upset. You loved her, and she's gone. I miss her so much. I know. I know. 